Welcome, my name is Dr. John Mwansalu Komona, Chairman of Makaya Wingi, and I'm saying Happy New Year, and I trust that all of you have had a wonderful beginning to the year 2013. This presentation is a report of what Makaya Wingi did from last year, that is 2012, to 31st of December 2012, from 1st of January, to the first of December, to the first of December, twenty twelve. It's in our tradition to send out a short video recording on our website, so that people can appreciate of the events that took place. Amaka Wingi in January, twenty twelve, set out to do a number of conferences. The face of the conference that was done in the year 2012 was actually 31st of March, in which we were receiving His Excellency uh, Lieutenant Colonel Newton Bizwam Konika, who was then the new Zambian High Commissioner when the PF government came into power. As a Maka Wingi, we have a tradition to receive our leaders in the United Kingdom where we work with the Zambian High Commission in collaboration especially link with the Economic and Trade a, Office so we set out to welcome His Excellency and the event was well attended by 30 different companies from the Zambian community and also our friends of Zambia, the Britons, the uh, Nigerians, the uh, Malawans, Tanzanians, and so forth. The reason why we do such kind of a conference with uh, uh, the authorities is because we believe that uh, every form of investment has to be governed in one way or another by our local authorities. And we do bring a great honor to our government of Zambia because they have uh, received our programs with two hands and we continue working in collaboration. Amaka Wingi also set out to do another conference which was held on the 2nd of June 2012. This was at uh, 93 Hagri Road at the 1863 Limited Company. This conference was an open conference between different companies from various backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, to look at the um, the nuances that uh, exist within various communities and how they do business uh, and how each of these different cultures still manage to do their business and they still survive and they do very well. So that conference was set out to learn from one another and was very successful and very well attended with the target group that we're looking for. People did attend and for much of the information that uh, we Summarized is found on our website, which is www.amakayawingi.org. Then, in the um, course of the year, we also set out um, a follow up conference of the 2nd June, in which we said we will do a conference where we take a number of companies from the UK into Zambia to share some knowledge, especially on the mindset. That was in uh, September, from 18th of September to 20th of September. We covered 19th of, 18th of September was the chief executives and public officials, in which we saw the Zambia Development Agency, representing the public officials, came to work with us. And that was very fruitful in the areas of collaboration. And we have since uh, started working together in collaboration with Zambia Development Agency. And just taking a backdrop for on this conference, uh, during the uh, the year, the government of Zambia did send a number of officers from Zambia into the UK to come and bring awareness of the investment opportunities which are in Zambia. And uh, one of the things that we do appreciate the Zambia Commission for was the fact that they did recognize Amakaya Wing as a platform that brings businesses together and also disseminate information that can help Zambians who live in diaspora and friends of Zambians who live in diaspora to be able to invest in Zambia and various collaborative uh, sort of potentials. 
So to this effect, uh, when the, uh, the Vice President, uh, His Honor uh, Dr. Guy Scott visited in the UK, Amaka Abing was invited for the luncheon, for which uh, myself as chairman attended. And I did participate in um, speaking uh, on an open forum to just answer questions and they also ask questions. So the audience was asking His Honor, the Vice President, uh, when following his interview by Thompson Reuters on that day, I did participate in the talks. From there, we did um, link up with the Islamic Development Agency that we spoke and the, um, the councillor, Mrs. Um, um, Mushinga, was there present too. We began deliberating, looking at the idea of working together with the ADA, especially that we are Makaya Wing, we talk about forming synergies as well as ZDA, they have the similar theme. And in our objective as a Makaya Wing, we want to link the diaspora people back into Zambia. And that began sort of a wonderful scenario. And let, later on in the year, when uh, uh, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Michael Chufia Sata, came to meet the Zambian, uh, Zambians in the UK, at the time when he was invited as a guest uh, to the Queen's Jubilee, we met at the um, house of uh, the Zambian Commissioner there. The President spoke to Zambians. At that time, we, Amakaya Wingi, had a meeting with the ZDA to say we can uh, actually make this thing work where we work together as uh, Amakaya Wingi and ZDA. These can form a good partnership in the sense that we share similar objectives on companies, individuals, organizations working together in clusters. This was a scene that we thought um, can be a good starting point for us in diaspora and they need to collaborate. And we followed up the, uh, the conversation and our meeting and it happened. Amaka having it over to Zambia to go and discuss how possibly we can do this together we came to a place where we concluded that it's good to do joint conferences. When Amakawi is doing a conference, ZDA must come in as well, so that some of the objectives can be made together with our objectives. And this can bring a strength, because there is strength in working together. And this has happened. This is what um, the um, conferences in September, from 18th of September to 20th of September, focused on. So we looked at uh, how can we bring together the chief executives and public officials to just begin to talk business and uh, see how we can cross pollinate and see development in Zambia. Because our focus as a Makaya Wingi has always been uh, um, that Zambians who live abroad must be able to invest in Zambia and should be looking to invest in Zambia because Zambians have traveled abroad Presumably, if all things are equal, have access to cheaper financing, have access to uh, resources, have access to certain type of knowledge, which is worth exporting into Zambia. And on this basis, we can work with the uh, uh, government uh, or uh, agencies to be able to amass the, these uh, resources and channel them in the direction or in the places where it can become viable vis-a-vis -vis setting up new business initiatives or enhancing existing businesses on the ground with the uh, support of Zambians who are living abroad. And when they bring resources in those existing businesses, they are brought to a certain level where they can actually become more productive than before. Indeed, we met um, on the second day of the meeting, which is 19th of September, we met with the SMEs. If you want to look at the definition of SMEs, it's um, a well documented on the ZDA website, www.zda.org.zm. The classifications are well categorized. So we met with SMEs and MSCs. What was the theme of the whole this conference period? It was um, uh, setting a different future today. We were saying that a right mindset 
is a mindset which can transform our future. If we begin to think properly, think correctly, have a right attitude about everything we do as a business community of Zambians and also friends of Zambians, we can make our Zambian community a better, investable and viable one. What was the focus? The mindset. How do you think? How do you do business? For example, if I have a business in the construction industry, for example, and another colleague has a business in another industry, for example, teaching, what is the mindset of a construction engineer that makes him or her make it in that environment? And what's the mindset of a person doing business in the teaching industry or what you call education industry? What sort of things work better and make them go a certain mile? Now, our role in this meeting was to look at the mindset. Can I not borrow some stuff from the construction industry and put them in my education business? For example, the construction industry, they specialize in multifaceted delivery. That is to say, one project is not delivered by one company. It's delivered by a multi-agency. One will be making bricks, another one will be drawing uh, the plans, another one will be fronting the financing, another one will be doing the marketing. It is not one company that owns a whole project. So a project is delivered by multi-partners. Why can we not borrow the same idea into education? What's the advantage of delivering a project with multi-agency? Number one is accountability. Number two, the is in a, a reveraging of knowledge from each of the partners involved. Secondly, there's a potential that a new business ideas will be birthed. So we said the mindset must change by cross-referencing or cross-pollinating from across various businesses. So entrepreneurs there can spot opportunities because they've come in contact with a new set of knowledge by virtue of working together. And also we say, how would somebody raise capital, finances to do a new business, unless the mindset is different, rather than being the sole trader, the sole director, the sole owner of everything and all things and above all things, you're the only one. Why can you not do this? Share the partnership out. Share the, 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 the project out. Let someone take 20%, 30% before you realize you have raised sufficient capital. These are some of the things that we set out to do and uh, discuss in the conferences. And uh, if you want to look at the full production of videos which are not yet published because of the difference in technology, uh, follow us up on our, our website www.amakawing.org we will go, we're going to announce when this DVD is available for you to look at. We also looked at um, uh, the NGOs. We believe that uh, with the right mindset, we must see NGOs as proper businesses, except that there is no share capital in those businesses. The beneficiaries are the community we are supporting. For example, if your NGO uh, involves supporting children who have been abandoned, the beneficiaries or the stakeholders who benefit from there, who get the profit, are those people you're supporting, the abandoned children, who now are being cared for by you. But in, an, uh, in, in a, a business for profit financially, it is the shareholders. But the principles in which you run a business across the board is the same. You must monitor income and expenditure. You must pay salaries and wages. You must pay expenses. So now we began talking about how can NGOs learn to become viable while they are writing their bids to ask for finances from funders or donors. They must be able, for example, if an NGO is owned by a board of directors or board of um, a trustees who have skills, for example, some of them could be draftsmen, they know how to draw drawings for constructions, some of them don't know how to teach, some of them are accountants. Why can they package a service 
whereby they provide draftsmanship to go and draw drawings when a, a, a fee is paid to the consultant who is a member of the trustee uh, of the board of trustees when that fee is paid it goes to the charity and this can be huge sums of money so we discussed these things and we found that people bought into it NGOs realized that actually they could be making a huge amount of money for their own charities if they use services uh, they provide the services to the community the only thing is that they shouldn't take any profit out of it financially in their pocket if a fee is paid to them it must go to the coffers of the organization but if their constitution allows them to get a salary or a percentage to pay for their time they should be able to do that but 90 percent of the money must go to the charity that way they can have on one hand donations coming from uh, the donors after they've written a bid and also they are providing a service to the business community these things do work we have seen them in the western world we've seen them across uh, the board in many other uh, communities so the, the the importance of cross pollinating is that you learn from one angle and the other and by that method you become viable without your having to rely on one source of income which is uh, donations donations are very good and they are excellent but you find that sometimes the donors could be dried of funds but what are you going to do next and you need people to be supported so we discuss this in the conferences now coming back to the uh, um just uh, still following on this we also had on the uh, this, this i just take you back to the second the first day of our conference public officials in the morning we met with the zambia Development agency officials in the evening we met with the uh, uh the the house of the means of chiefs uh, facilitated by uh honorable professor Nkandunu. so this workshop took place at, at the chamber the uh, at the means of chiefs there and uh, it was very well attended the paramount chiefs of our country of zambia turned up which was a great honor and four uh, of our, our Macau team members uh, did run the workshop. It, the people that ran the workshop were consisted of our team from the UK. There was about uh, one, two, one, two, three companies from the UK, four companies including myself, and one company from Zambia. So the companies were CMM Molenga uh, Consultants Limited, based in Zambia. This company does attend the Macau conferences in the UK. They come frequently, so we are talking at a, at a, 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 at a par at, at par with this company. Very good company, well resourced, well trained in, in construction, and we also from uh, the UK we are the PCC Progressive Concept Consultants Limited, uh, uh, a construction company and consultants in training. They were present with us, and they is um, uh, Dr. David Oloke, the chief executive there. And we also had Equitas Resource Limited, uh, Mr. Oliver uh, Nyumbo, there in leadership development. And this is important. And we also had uh, uh, Mr. David Dixon, a, a founder of Village Water. Village Water has been in Zambia for more than 10 years. They do help uh, uh, develop uh, petrol trains in the rural areas such as Mungo and um, and so forth. So these are the companies I was with and Amakaya Wingi from the United Kingdom. We've got uh, our agencies uh, on the ground in Zambia. As Amakaya Wingi, we work with various people, various organizations to be able to foster the objectives. So we did a wonderful workshop with the chiefs. What was the theme? The theme is simply empowerment and investment within the chiefdoms. Chiefdoms must become viable because the land they live in is viable. Resources are plenteous. Underneath there, there's minerals, as we have seen crystal clear in the statistics that we have uh, 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 on the materials we obtained from ZDA. There was a show there. On the disk, we can see the, 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 the oil belts. We can see the, uh, the mineral uh, belts as well. We can see all sorts of things, the way the Zambian uh, uh, sort of mineral is structured and all the resources. The chiefdoms must be able to do well, but how do they do that? This is where Amaka Wingi uh, development workshops come in. Number one, we looked at uh, capacity building. Capacity building is essential on the business front. How does a business function? How does investment work? How can you resource for finances to be able to participate 
I beg your pardon, to participate in bigger investments ranging over half a million US dollars and more. How do you do that? How do other people do that? How do these other investors who come in our country invest with such amount of money? So we, we, we looked at those aspects uh, and uh, it was a wonderful thing because all these linkages have come as a result of Amakaya Wing interacting and being received very well by the Zambian High Commission in London. So it's a very typical good example which must be set across the board where the missions were over the country to work with Zambians and it works because as a Maka Wingy we can testify that our links has worked very well and has brought up to this stage. Now when we looked at this aspect of the, with the House of Chiefs, it was a common consensus to see that really there is need for development of chiefdoms and they will in fact become even viable if they go the investment way of things rather than receiving uh, wages uh, uh, the, the people work in the the people the, the the members of chiefdoms rather than just become being employees of companies that are set up there it's good for them also to become established to become business owners who can now be the actual indigenous investors so we looked at these aspects and the following year is going to be excellent because we believe that uh, um when partnerships like this begin, things can develop very well. What is the strength in this? The strength is that Zambians living abroad and Zambians in the mainland are now working together as very good partners. Not this one depending on another, but partnership like that. This one brings something to the table and this one brings something to the table. I, as a Zambian, representing a market wing and the business community, I live in, I've lived in the United Kingdom for a long time and I bring to the table knowledge and skills and links to collaborate with and the Zambians living uh, in, in Zambia from different ministries and agencies I've mentioned they bring the strength of having access to viable environment for investment land minerals uh, natural resources uh, human beings who are qualified for labor and also there's available labor in the other sectors and this is very important so both sides the diaspora and the mainland have something to bring to the table these are some of the things that Macau wing focused on uh, in, uh, in 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 this year 2012 january 2012 to uh, december 31st 2012 and we also went uh, further to uh, the mines in Sulawesi, where we've begun collaborations with uh, our colleagues on the ground especially in the uh, area of uh, um, Lumwana and under the chief of Mumena, is Royal Highness Chief Mumena, we have made collaborative links and we are looking at major projects in there. And it's uh, very important to note that uh, opportunities now have risen for many Zambians and friends of Zambians because we have been given a mandate to identify those people who want to participate and begin to provide services for the existing mines in Lumwana and Solwezi. What do I mean? There is um, a corporate social responsibility that the government has been enforcing and it's beginning to work very well. And I've, of the understanding that in the areas where investors are, they are required to at least contribute 10% of their profit or in the kind to the community of Zambians. Also by way of uh, allowing participation of service provision so that companies, smaller companies around the areas where these investors are can be, become viable. Now on that basis, many Zambians who live within Zambia and their eyes are open are beginning to dovetail and provide services to the mines. Amakaya Wingi has got access to this information and for those who would like to participate with us with this must be able to contact us and we can discuss further. So Amakaya Wingi has formed those, uh, those links. We have looked at a wide range of things in uh, Zambia which we can go into vis-a-vis -vis tourism, uh, agriculture and mining itself, service provision and many other areas. And we've also looked at uh, the, the medical uh, 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 industry where people who are qualified here abroad can go back home physically or in the kind 
there's several examples we can cite some of our members in terms of uh, uh, returning home have gone back home and they begin to do well so i will not mention names some of this is confidential but we can tell you when they are ready for interviews we will bring up the video clips for them to show us what they are doing so we've seen much more development uh, in latter years than before and it's natural when you begin a project in the first few years it's going to be ground breaking and preparing the furrow ground and making nice and then when you begin to plant you see results now in a uh, uh, short amaka wing is um, a movement of uh, business development attracting zambians living abroad and zambians living in the mainland to work together with a view of investing and also the cornerstone in terms of directing the vision of Amaka Wing and its objectives is capacity building. Without knowledge, people perish. That is to say, without knowledge, people go astray. <laughs> they do things anyhow. So Amaka Wing has specialized and this has evolved naturally in capacity building. We invite people from different backgrounds, from the, the from financial industry, construction industry, educational industry, we do from mining industry, from all sectors of business, we do invite people to come and disseminate information. And we also open the platform for various companies to come and pitch so that they can attract investment, they can attract partners, also just to let the public know who they are. And peradventure, they can form synergies as well and create new products which add value to our network and the community. So Amaka Wingi has evolved in that. If I want to define Amaka Wingi um, business platform in two sentences, I'll say we attract, in few phrases, two sentences will, will be too short. We attract Zambians living abroad and Zambians in the mainland to work together with a view of investment. We attract non-Zambians and Zambians to work together with a view to invest on the base of this its capacity building. It's on this platform when you do build capacity that people begin to work together and identify and spot opportunities for investment. This is what Amaka Wenge has been doing and in short, this is what we have seen happen. Where are we going? In the next uh, uh, section, I'll define where we're going in the next 12 months. Thank you very much for listening.